So I have two classes here. I have one class that is a pre-made class from the district, already has students in it. When I'm finished with a class, I can hit my three dots and end that class to get back out of it. And if I click on this class, this class is a class that I made myself. So this class has a student in it um, that I have added. So it shows a student named Penny the Pirate. So what I can do is I can tap on Penny and I get a series of options that I can use to control her device. So uh, I can choose to open apps on her device. And by simply hitting open, I will see a whole list of every app that she has on her device. And I could tell it to launch that app. So if I wanted her to record a voice memo, I can simply choose voice memos and it will launch that app automatically on her device um, for her. All right. Now, if I hit done and I wanted to do that again, this time I'm going to open an app and I wanted to lock her in the voice memo app. Before I click on the app icon, I'm going to check the box that says lock in app after opening and then I could tell it to launch that app and she would not be able to leave that app uh, until I gave her permission. So maybe I wanted to lock her in the Canvas student app. And so if I do that, it's gonna launch that app for her. So it's gonna leave the uh, voice memo app and it'll open up the Canvas student app and she is now locked in that app. And no matter what she does, home button, uh, whatever, will not let her out of that app until I choose to unlock her. So if I hit done, you'll notice there's now a little lock icon here next to her name. And I would simply have to either click the unlock button uh, to unlock all students, or um, over here on the left, it shows me, hey, I have a student here in the app here. I could unlock all of the students that were locked into that app, or I could simply open up that student and you would see a lock or unlock button in here to let them out of that app as well. An important thing to point out is that this will lock them in one specific app, not a group of apps. So um, let's say I lock them in Canvas, and that sounds like a great idea, but let's say I have a Google assignment that I want them to do in Canvas. That might require them to leave the Canvas app to go into the Google Docs app or to go into a browser to be able to edit that Google Doc. Um, then they won't be able to do that assignment because they're going to be locked in Canvas and it won't let them leave to launch other apps. So the iPad works really well about launching one app, launching into another app. So sometimes when you lock them into one app, just be aware that that may break other links to other things, depending on how your devices are set up. So another thing I can do is launch specific websites on their device. So if I tapped on uh, their name and I go to navigate, I can tell it to go ahead and go directly to a website in Safari. Now by default, it is gonna look at all of the different websites that I have bookmarked already. And maybe you have the website that you want them to visit bookmarked. But if you don't, the cool thing is, is I can just be in Safari. And since I've already opened up that class, all right, once I've launched that class in Apple Classroom, I can be in Safari and I can navigate to any website that I want. And when I'm on that website, and if I want everybody in the class to be on that website, all I have to do is hit my share arrow. And under AirDrop, I'm going to see an option now that shows other people or the people in that class. All right, so I can go ahead and send this to my entire class, which I called test. So this test icon right here is sending this website to my entire test class which could be first hour, second hour, third hour, or I could send it to individual people that have AirDrop turned on. So I could simply hit test and it will automatically send this website to Penny the Pirate's device and launch that website automatically, even though in Apple Classroom, I did not have that website bookmarked. This also works with anything I can AirDrop. So I could send a photo uh, the same way with the share arrow and airdrop it to an entire class or a PDF file uh, that I might have open or something in Google. Anything I can share uh, where I can share it via airdrop, I can send it to an entire class that's exact same way. Another thing I can do is again, tap on a student's name. I can view their screens. So obviously this is a pretty powerful tool. I can view and see what students are doing. I could look at one screen or I could look at a whole variety of screens. So over here on the left, it's gonna show me um, the ability to organize my class into a couple sections if I want. So by default, it tells me, hey, 
Um, this is a class with all of the students or a group with all of the students in it if I want to. And when a student opens an app, those apps are automatically going to be grouped in here for you based on what they have going on. So uh, if Penny opens up Safari, then it shows up over here in the Safari group. And I could go ahead and do something to all of the Safari people if I wanted to, or just simply all the students in the class. Now by default, it's going to show me these little icons for each person. But if I wanted to see their screen instead, I can click on this button up here at the top. And this will give me a small preview of everyone's screens on my page at once. And then again, anytime I wanted to simply see a person's screen, uh, I would simply tap on their device and view screen and I could see exactly what that person's doing. So it's a quick, easy way to view them all at once. Another thing I could do is I could create new groups. I could create a new group button. Uh, I could give this group a name and I can add students to it. So uh, maybe I have a certain group of students who are working on a different project, or maybe a certain group of students that tend to get off task a little more often than others, and I wanted to put them in their own separate group in this class, just so I make sure that I want to maybe view their screens a little closer, um, and I'd be able to see those at once if I want. So let me tap on Penny again. Um, a couple other things that I can do. I can choose to lock her device, and if I do... Um, her device gets locked instantly uh, and there's nothing she can do on it and uh, short of restarting her entire device if she wanted to. But again, all I have to do is simply hit the lock or unlock button at the top to unlock her when I'm finished and she goes right back into where she left off. Um, nothing has changed. Um, I could also choose to mute all the devices or her device if I wanted to so she would have no sound. So if they're listening to something or maybe doing a, an audio project, they can do that. Um, if I wanted to AirPlay their device to an Apple TV, I could choose to do that. I would simply click on AirPlay uh, next to her student's name, and this would actually take her device and put it onto the Apple TV for her to be able to uh, display what it is that she's doing. And I do also have the ability to uh, remove that student if uh, I wanted to from this class. Maybe a student drops and hasn't removed themselves from the class yet. I can do that. So... Um, the hide button does show up here. This is designed to hide apps, but we use a different system to manage our apps, so that really doesn't do anything for us here in Apple Classroom. Um, same thing with password. Password would allow you to reset a student's Apple ID, but we don't currently use that. Um, we use the district model to be able to do that, so you can always contact your building tech people to be able to do that if you need to. But it's a, a quick, simple way to monitor and see what students are doing. Now, one of the biggest changes to uh, Apple Classroom is when you're done, how do you get out of a class? So when I am finished with this class, I have these buttons up here at the top. I can turn off the sidebar to make things go full screen. I have shortcuts up here at the top in order to be able to open apps, open websites. Um, I can, again, turn screens off and on. I can hide apps. I can lock or unlock devices, and I can mute devices. Um, but if I tap on these three dots, I also have the ability to add or remove students to this class. So if I had, uh, again, needed to add somebody else, I would simply go to add students, enter in the student's name, and I can add those students to my class if I want. Um, but the big option here is when I'm done with this first hour class or second hour, whatever it is I'm teaching, I need to tap on these three dots and tell it to end that class. And when I tell it to end, I then get a quick class summary report, which shows me uh, what the students in my class were doing. So it shows me which students were engaged, which apps they were using. And if I tapped on an app, it'll actually show me uh, entirely in that class period how this student used it. So from the very beginning to the end here, this is the overall time period of this Apple Classroom class that I started and ended. And the blue lines are the parts where the student used, uh, used Safari. So this is the part where they use the Canvas app, and then this is the part where they use the Voice Memos app. So um, I can also simply tap on a student, and it'll show me all of the apps that that student was in uh, at any given time. So this information is screenshotable, so if you have a student who is off task, this is a great way to prove what apps that student was using uh, and keep them off task. And then when I'm done, all I have to do is hit done, and it takes me right back to my main menu to be able to manage the next class and start and stop, just like I would before.